Uh, that being the Western Bulldogs, and they are looking very, very ominous at the moment. Yeah, they controlled this game for big parts of it. Carlton couldn't score in the first half, and then they flicked the switch and they started to take the game on a little bit more, and these are the lead change in the last quarter. What about Tom Liberatore? Every time a, a clean ball needs to be taken, this guy does it, and he's elite by foot. We all talk about his handball skills, but he is elite by foot. Charlie Kerner had a quiet night, but had a moment here in the last quarter. And then Arthur Jones, I tell you what, did he play a great last quarter, Arthur Jones? and he's one of our favourites in here, but reads we discovered beautifully, him. and then he hasn't got much room to move, and then nails the goal. This is a big moment for the Bulldogs to put themselves back in front, and they went on to kick four of the last five after that, and a good performance. Hey, Brown, I want to look deeper into those late moments. Charlie Kerno kicks a goal with six minutes to go, and the Blues are in front, but let's look at how the Bulldogs won the key moments when they were there to be won. So here's one, Doherty. Should he drive with his legs? Because if he misses that and loses his feet, they're out. So he falls over. And how does Arthur Jones, that goal you just showed, from a centre bounce, how does he get that time and space? A Carlton defender will be nervous on Monday watching that vision back, how he's left Arthur free. Here's Bailey Smith on Hewitt, and here's Arthur Jones on Sard. And watch how with this unfolds. Again, two points in it. Doggies are in front. Hewitt gets drawn to the contest. Bailey Smith, he's off. You don't want to let him run. Where's Sard going? He's going to the back of the contest. Jones always goes to the front of the contest and wins that crumb. Bailey Smith is away and kicks the goal. And I thought the dogs continued to outnumber the West... Uh, the Blues late in the game. So again, ball's in dispute. Who wants it? The Doggies have got three there compared to the Blues. And then as the play unfolds, again, brings it to ground, Hugo Hagen. Norton's stronger than McGovern. McGovern loses his feet. He's out of the contest and they're away. Chip, chip over the top. And there's the sealer from uh, Norton over the top to Eugle Hagen. So the Dogs won the big moments late in that game. Yeah, it's really good vision, Lordo. And there's a couple of Blues that will be nervous, as you said. I reckon Michael Voss and his strategy will be nervous as well. Lordo showed this clip. I want to break it down because the Western Bulldogs always send a forward up as an extra midfielder at the stoppage. You've got to make a decision. Newman, do I come with Waitman to the stoppage or do I drop off and be the extra behind the ball? As we roll this, we're going to see that Cody Waitman is a forward. He comes up as an extra midfielder. Midfielder, they outnumber at the stoppage. He wins the clearance. Okay, so where's his man? Newman, he's back there as the extra. If you are there, you've got to impact that ball. He does nothing. We've seen Bailey Smith follow up from the stoppage and kick the goal. So the Western Bulldogs always do it. It's Bailey Smith, it's McRae. On that occasion, it was Waitman coming up as the extra midfielder. Should you go? Well, they probably should have gone with him on that occasion. And Cody Waitman will join us live a little later in the program. Certainly will, Tony. Um, sorry? No, it's all right. You get your hands out like that. Because it's one of those moments <laughs> where you could drive a, yeah. a truck bus through it. it. Yeah. <laughs> what, I mean, what, 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 why is there always like a gap? I thought you were going to demo. I apologise, Tony. Uh, the Carlton forwards, so first half, they were ineffective. They had 29 inside 50s in the first quarter. They changed up a bit after half time, but they were kicking to Durden, Owies, and Motlop, and it seemed to work for a while. They had multiple shots at goal. They, they couldn't snap the ball, but it's not a long term fix. You can't be kicking to those three tall play, uh, small players and have Kerno and also. So, what's, so what's happening around. with that, Lord Owen Brownie? So 29 entries in the first half for one goal, and you've got two prime key forwards absolutely at the top of their game, well, they should be, and they score one goal. Entries, they okay. score one goal. So what is going on with Carlton's well, ball movement? Well, you wonder, is Mackay, though, a factor? We talk about two great key forwards. but he, Is he overrated? Uh, well... He had a great season a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a low number to win a common medal on. It was high 50s. He, what's he kicked? Nine goals for the year or yeah. something like that. So he's not really a factor. And the last two weeks, Payne has got hold of, uh, of Kerno, yeah. And then he didn't have a great night last night. So if Kerno doesn't fire, there's a lot of Gee, pressure. He moved the ball a lot quicker last year, though. I mean, yeah. it is slow build-up methodical and then all of a sudden at the end they want to bomb it in and expect mm. Kerno and Charlie uh, and, and Harry Mackay to do their thing every time. It's not going to happen easy every time. They need to move the ball quicker. So what, what is the problem? I mean Nathan's touched on it but with Mackay in particular like he's obviously got the ability is it is it the ball movement? Well he is can't kick for starters. Uh, okay so what's he doing wrong? Oh well I don't know who the coach is or whether he's, he, he can't be coached but some of his misses again last night. That's deflating for you yeah. as a coach. It's demoralising. And, and it's demoralising for, for your yeah. team. Yeah. But yeah, he's, so, he's just not even hitting the belly of the ball in his snaps where he was good. But I feel like Carlton, when the game is lost, they move the ball as you should. But it's like when the game against Brisbane last week, the game was shot at three-quarter time. They start moving the ball quickly. Mm. When the game is shot, 
halfway through the third, they start moving the ball quick. Whereas you look at the best sides like Collingwood, that's how they play all, they all set year. up to play. Yeah, yeah and, we, and, to play. and we were saying two years yeah. ago, you can't sustain that, but yeah. they can. They can, yeah. yeah. Look, the ball movement, you've all yeah. referred to it all, already. It was a, a focus post-match. Michael Voss speaking about it. It was a problem again last night. It did start to flow somewhat in the third quarter and he's clinging to hope that it might have fixed itself. I, I think like, you sort of look at the, the ball movement and we've spoken a little bit about it last week some of the things that we needed to, to get to work on out of our back half. Um, there's a couple that stand out to me that we'd like to have some better options, but I'd say generally it was a massive improvement on what we're, what we're trying to create. So uh, I thought we took our moments when we needed to, we took it offline when we needed to. Um, yeah, we were able to string some great passages of play together.